And hello again, another tutorial here. This time we'll start with Carrara. This is because um, this is my favorite uh, 3D program um, for just about anything 3D. But um, we often want to finish it up with another program and uh, do some special effects and add some, uh, perhaps some lens flares or some other motion or some other things to that, compositing with other scenes. And so I, I felt it's important to show some techniques that you can use easily uh, if, you, if you want to take an object, a 3D object, a model, and render it out uh, with the transparent background, for instance, so that you can use it as a, uh, a custom brush or animated custom brush inside of Dog Waffle. So to start, what we'll do is we'll go to the, uh, the objects collection here. Let me uh, make this a little bit li uh, larger. There's a lot of, there are a lot of presets and you may have your own 3D model. You may have created your own airplane, your own spaceship or whatever the object is. I'm going to use uh, this little astronaut here. Double click that and it goes into a newly created empty scene. Uh, you can, uh, however, you'll, you'll probably want to add a few things to that, such as some light source, or you can create a new scene initially and then insert that or add it to it. Whatever the technique is, let, let me do a quick render. Um, there is a uh, shortcut X uh, to render a particular region and you can tell it's very dark. So I'm going to actually use a background. Let's go over here to the scene and select uh, select the background to be some sort of a gradient. Uh, so there is a little bit of a brownish um, lighting coming from underneath it. And in fact, we'll do the same here. We'll perhaps pick some, actually we'll pick white for that one. And <laughs> let's click that and make sure it's really white. There you go. And then the, <coughs> the end of the sky will merge, will join that as well. So we have sort of a dark blue at the top going to white along the horizon and pick up that same white at the horizon and go down to a earth brownish color. Um, so <coughs> what we can do now is uh, just do a quick render like this and it's still very dark because we haven't enabled this background uh, to be the light source yet. So we need to enable um, global illumination or basically have the sky background act as a light source. All right, so let's go over to the render settings. And in the render settings, we can look here on the global illumination skylight. All right, so the sky is now the light. Let's go do a render in the new window. And there it is. So now we actually have the whole sky environment acting as a light source, which is going to be great. But now we want the background to turn transparent. And so that's going to be an option for some of the file formats, you'll have the option to do so. And what you'll need to do is go to the output and select the file format. Uh, right now I have BMP and you can see if this box is selectable, no. So a render alpha channel, it will not allow you to send it out to, uh, with, an alpha, with a transparency mask. Ch try another, uh, PNG for instance should have that. Yep, there it is. So you can save this out as a T uh, PNG. Um, I'm going to use another format here, Targa. There it is. TGA, that one also gives you that option. Okay, and so what you can do now is render this out to Targa and as an image sequence. Now, of course, we need to have some sort of an animation that's uh, of interest. Uh, let's go back to our editor and perhaps uh, view the entire, um, where is it, view production frame so we can see where we'll actually have something to render. Let's view, uh, show production frame, there it is. Okay, we didn't need this one here, lock production frame. Okay, so <coughs> we can, uh, perhaps what we'll do is we'll simply have him spin around. I think what I'll do is um, give the whole object sort of a property that it spins around the uh, blue, the, the Z axis. So <coughs> what I'll do first is uh, arrange the camera a little bit. Let's see if we can rotate this, tilt it a little bit differently. One more time, there you go. Something like this, right? And now I want him to spin. Let's go select it. Oh, it's already selected. But let's select the astronaut right here and give him a spin motion. So that's a modifier. And the modifier, you can add many different types of modifiers. I'm gonna give it a behavior, which is going to be a spinning motion. So there it is, there's a spin behavior. The default spin, is along the z-axis that should work just fine red green blue x y z so that should work just fine let's see if we drag the animation yep it goes there but the the mmu is not moving with it ah that's this one here what do we need to do with that so we probably need to group the two together 
Right, so what I'll do is I'll undo this, I'll select the spin motion I had for the astronaut, let's get rid of that, and let's select them both. Let's select camera, no, uh, MMU and astronaut. Now we could make the astronaut a child to the MMU, so whenever the MMU moves, the astronaut moves with it, or when it spins, it spins with it. That would be one way to do it. Uh, let's see if we can shift click on both yep and then control g probably to group them there it is right shortcut to uh, create a group of the two selected items there so now <coughs> i can select simply the group and apply that transform here so let's go and do a uh, behavior there it is and give it the spin and it's still along the z-axis let's see what that looks like now Aha, now we have them nicely together. But they can still move independently if we wanted to. But what one thing we want to do though is just uh, maybe a two, second, uh, two seconds for a full spin. Let's see, I think we have two spins here. One second, already one spin. Yeah, so we're going too fast. And uh, we, we want to go at 30 frames a second in the end, but we uh, are going too fast. And I think what we need to do is simply tell it if this is going to last two seconds, uh, or maybe even more. Let's say we want to make it last uh, four seconds. There, 0 0.4. So it's a full four seconds. We need this to be a quarter turn per second. Right, so uh, we need that to be 0 0.25. <coughs> and then that way, oh, and I was not at the right place. So let's make sure we don't do this. Let's go and uh, delete this uh, keyframe. There you go. Let's make sure we're at the very end or very beginning of the animation and set that property right there. Okay, so there is 0 0.25 and there. Why is it still moving? That is odd. Okay, maybe I'll go like this. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely spinning out of control. I need to give it a different uh, movement. So let's go to the very first. And am I at the very first frame? Yep. And 0 0.25. Why is it moving this when I'm changing the speed? That is really odd. 0. Point oh, you know what? It's because <laughs> I'm on the French version of... There you go. I'm on the French version of Windows and the period is not accepted. Uh, I need to enter a comma here. So, yeah, there it is. 0, 0,25. Okay, I think that will look a little bit better. Yeah, now I have the keyframe. Well, that was odd, but uh, that's understandable now. So, now we have the animation that we can see makes a full turn in exactly one second. The last frame should probably be the same orientation as the first. Yep. So we have one redundancy here, that last frame we could possibly ditch or we could delete it at the very end if we want this to be a looping animation later on, right, that keeps repeating. We don't want to stay on the last frame if the next frame at the beginning is going to be the same orientation. But that's okay, we can now live with this and let's go in and zoom in a little bit or move in a little bit, uh, something like that. Actually, we should probably change the aspect ratio to uh, make it a square. Let's make it six, uh, 512 by 512. Don't keep the proportions. Let's make it 512 and 512 over here. Now we can lock it in such and do another render. Yeah, so now it's, it's actually wasting a lot of space around it here. We can definitely move in a little bit closer. Let's go abort this animation for now. And what we'll do is we'll make sure we add the first frame here and zoom in. So now we need a little bit more room here to see this. Let's go, I'm gonna go with this one here and just zoom in a little bit until we barely touch the bottom here and perhaps the top as well. Let's see, something like this. All right, and then we can also go up here. Okay, that's good enough. We don't need to be all that close, but that's that's going to be just helping it a little bit. There you go. Let's use this. And so now we have a nice little animation. Ooh, we're coming close to the touching the border there a little bit. Maybe we need to move it down a tiny little bit. Tiny notch there. Yeah, the top is better now. It stays inside the safe zone, the margin. Still even even more. We, the feet are not going to come touch it down there. So at the feet we have plenty of room against the margin. Okay, that's about as perfect as it will get. Let's do a last uh, test render here. 
and you can tell you know when, while we're working with this maybe we don't need that much uh, detail uh, on the high quality rendering anti-aliasing reflections transparencies and that sort of things so we can certainly uh, uh, reduce that a little bit in the final render uh, we want it the best possible though so let's go and delete those prior renders and see what else we need full ray tracing um, probably light through transparency yes uh, fast let's give it a good anti-aliasing let's go uh, down to one uh, <coughs> pixel accuracy for the shadow object care accuracy for the shadows maybe one or two uh, so skylight intensity if it's too bright let's bring it down a little bit and let's see do we need indirect light no not so much i don't know that we will really be able to tell the difference but maybe ambient occlusion well i know uh, we can tell the difference in some cases but this particular scene is probably going to not vary a whole lot so um let's do without indirect light now comes the part about the alpha channel um we have that actually already covered um uh, we may want to indicate the tile size a little bit smaller and really just double check that we are still saving that out to Targa. Um, see right now it's a movie so now we want to have an image sequence. Right? So Windows AVI would be great but it will not give you the alpha channel on that uh, with some exceptions. I mean there are some codecs that can have it but then the question is uh, can the next program you are using also handle the alpha channel out of that codec? and many times that's a no. So probably best to save it out uh, something like a PNG image sequence or Targa. Now Dog Waffle can load uh, into the custom brush with the alpha channel. It can load BMP and Targa at this time. Uh, PNG it can load into the main animation but not into the, um, the brush uh, animated brush as an image sequence. Not quite yet. Hopefully that will be there in the future but right now uh, Targa is probably your best bet to work with that and make sure you keep this one checked here render alpha uh, alpha channel um, this one you might worry about or not let's set the file name let's say where exactly we want to render that uh, maybe that will be you know what let's go to where we'll need it later on for our um, dog waffle uh, animation and I'm going to put that into Carrara subfolder and this is going to be my spinning astronaut spinning astronaut right and so we need to give it a uh, base uh, file name astronaut Ooh, there's a T missing here let's go oh astronaut there you go okay and then with that we should be able to render that let's go do just that uh, right here Yep, so now we have the alpha channel, you know, the, the transparency mask there, render alpha channel included with that alpha. So the skylight itself is no longer visible as a background. It's uh, not needed. What we do get from this though is the lighting effect that it's provide so that we actually have a nice natural lighting um, coming from the entire sky dome around it. And this will take a few seconds or maybe a minute or two to render. And uh, in the next part of the tutorial, we'll uh, take this into Dog Waffle and learn to work a little bit more with uh, animated brushes, uh, anim brushes or custom brushes that are animated image sequences. So you can put that into uh, Dog Waffle and then perhaps render it in front of another animation or in just stamp it down into a, a still composition of some sort. So we'll, we'll experiment with that in a couple of different ways. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon in the sequel to this. Thank you.